Okay, so we are um, welcome back after the break. After the, before the break, we were looking at chapter three. Uh, now we'll be looking at chapter four, the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. And we looked at John chapter 16, verse 13 to 14. Um, when we saw how the Holy Spirit guides us, He gives us all truth, He leads us more, uh, into the pleasing, well pleasing, and acceptable will of God, and will also lead us and guide us and show us the things that are going to come in the future. Okay, now we'll take a, a look at First Corinthians chapter 2, verses uh, 9 to 16, and uh, there are a few things that we can learn from. Um, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 to 16. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 to 16. If you can turn to page number 43, please, in your uh, books or the PDF copy. Okay, so uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 to 16 says that, you know, but as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Okay? But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. We've already looked at this study, this verse, when we were looking at... Uh, you know, fulfilling God's purpose for our lives. We saw that God has wonderful, great, big, wonderful plans that he's planned and prepared for us. But how do we know it? Who reveals it to us? It's the Holy Spirit who reveals it. What's the meaning of the word reveal? The word reveal means to, the Greek word means to uncover, to unveil, to make known, uh, to make manifest, to make, uh, to disclose uh, before us what is unknown so the things that are unknown to us the holy spirit reveals it to us and so it's so important for us to have fellowship with the holy spirit okay and verses 11 and 12 says you know uh, for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him even so no one knows the things of god except the spirit of god okay um Verse 12, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Okay, so who knows the things of God? The Holy Spirit. Okay, and here it says that we have been given the Holy Spirit. So we are so privileged. We have been given the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is our teacher, our helper, our guide, our counselor. He is the spirit of adoption. There's so many other things. He gives us the gifts of the Spirit. He produces in us the fruit of the Spirit. But he also see here that, you know, um, you know, we have the Spirit of God. And why do we have the Spirit of God? So that we will know. Okay? Perceive means what? We will know. We will understand. We will discern, you know, the things that God has freely given to us god has given us you know so many uh, spiritual blessings he's given us freely we don't know many of them but how do we know it it's the holy spirit who will reveal it to us okay and um, the holy spirit makes it known to us so you know you don't have to go asking around people you know what do i do with this you know i'm on this problem in the situation how do i go about it you know you just have the holy spirit with you all the time he's your counselor he's your guide amen okay you don't have to run here and there you don't have to wait for people to tell you but you can just ask the holy spirit because he's your guide he makes known the things of god to us he makes known the plans uh, the wonderful things that God has prepared for us, he makes known to us. Verses 13 to 15, okay, it says, The things which the Holy Spirit reveals to us have to be understood spiritually. Okay, so verses 13 to 15 says, These things we also speak, not in words which, which man's wisdom teaches, but with the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual and verse 15 says, but he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. Verse 14, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Okay, so we see that the things that the Holy Spirit reveals to us cannot be understood by the 
natural mind okay it has to be understood spiritually and that is why it's so important for us to feed our spirit man and not feed our carnal nature okay so those who are living in their natural mind cannot understand cannot comprehend cannot discern what the holy spirit is telling them we need to be spiritually minded okay and uh, the holy spirit reveals the things of god to us in our spirit man and that's why you know we need to be spiritual people and as spiritual people we need to judge which means we need to examine we need to investigate everything before we accept them okay and verse 16 it says but who has known the mind of the lord that he may instruct him but we have the mind of christ okay why can we say that we have the mind of christ okay why do we say that we have the mind of christ because the holy spirit reveals the mind of god to us the holy spirit reveals the mind of jesus to us the holy spirit reveals the plans the purposes the de decisions the desires the direct directions the feelings the intents the thoughts of jesus christ and that is why we have the mind of christ why do we have the mind of christ it's because the holy spirit reveals the things to us so what is the end result of having the mind of christ the end result of having the mind of christ is we're able to understand Jesus's plans, his direction, his purposes, his thoughts, his feelings that he has towards us. Okay. And uh, we can know anything in any given matter because we have the mind of Christ, because the Holy Spirit takes from Jesus and reveals it to us. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. So, you know, each one of us have the mind of Christ. And because we have the mind of Christ, we know the thoughts, uh, we can receive the ideas, we can understand his plans, and we can understand his ways. Okay, so I want you all to repeat this after me. I have the mind of Christ. I know his thoughts. I receive his ideas. I understand his plans. I understand his ways. I think you can make this declaration in your in your life, you know, even as you are praying every day, you can say, God, thank you that I have the mind of Christ. Because I have the mind of Christ, I know uh, your thoughts, God. I can receive your ideas, God. I understand your plans and I can understand your ways. Okay. So, um, you know, as New Testament believers, we have the mind of Christ and the Holy Spirit makes known to us the things that Jesus Christ has planned for us even before the foundations of the world. Okay, so there are several ways we can know uh, uh, the mind of Christ or we can know the, how the Holy Spirit reveals things to us. Uh, we will look at uh, some things individually in the chapters to come, but we will look at a few things here. We'll first understand how the Holy Spirit uh, speaks to us or reveals the mind of God to us. He reveals it to the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, the inner witness of the Holy Spirit spirit okay so that is how the holy spirit speaks or reveals the mind of god to us the plans the purposes the intents of um, god to us okay so um romans chapter 8 verses 14 to 16 can somebody read that please Thank you. So here he says that, you know, who are we? Sons and daughters of God. Okay, we are the sons and daughters of God. We are heirs of God. We are co-heirs with Christ Jesus. Okay, so we are sons and daughters of God. And because we are sons and daughters of God, it means that we belong to God's family. Okay, so because we are sons and daughters of God, we are also led by the Holy Spirit spirit so we have this awesome privilege because we are sons and daughters of god that we can be led by the holy uh, spirit this is our privilege okay that we can be led and guided by the spirit of uh, god okay and uh, the holy spirit all has another name he's also called as the spirit of adoption 
Okay, that means the Holy Spirit testifies to us that we are children of God, that you are sons of God or your daughters of um, God. And we also see here in this verse that the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit. The Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit. That means there's a joint witness. The Holy Spirit bears witness means the Holy Spirit uh, together with our spirit, you know, testifies, bears a joint witness um, that we are children of God. Okay. So here in verse 16, it says that, you know, how do we know that we are children of God? Because of the inner conviction, the inner witness, uh, the inner knowing, the inner assurance uh, that comes through the witness of the Holy Spirit. So when we are born again, we are born again in our spirit man. Our, our spirit man is joined to the Holy Spirit. And hence the Holy Spirit can bear witness. It can testify uh, 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 in our spirit man. And how do we know that we are children of God? It's the inner conviction, just inner convi conviction that I am a child of God. An inner knowing, an inner assurance that comes to the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit's inner witness actually confirms to us that we are sons and daughters of uh, God. And also the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, you know, uses the inner witness as something to lead us and guide us. So, so two things the Holy Spirit does to the inner witness. The first thing confirms to us that we are sons and daughters of God. And the second thing, it also the Holy Spirit through the inner witness leads us and guides us. Okay. So what is this inner witness? How does the Holy Spirit guide us through this inner witness? Sometimes it will just be a, a knowing. We just know in our heart that this is what the Holy Spirit is telling us to do. Sometimes it can be an assurance. Sometimes it can be conviction. Sometimes we can just sense the Holy Spirit is telling us. We will look at everything in detail. Sometimes we can just feel, you know, it'll just be like, you know, somebody is giving you a gentle tap or a nudge, you know, uh, 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 you, when, you, when you experience the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, it will be this way, okay? So um, we need to understand that the inner witness of the Holy Spirit when he's leading us and guiding us in the things of life should not be mixed up with our emotions. Okay, we should not be, uh, we should not confuse the inner witness of the Holy Spirit with uh, our emotions. Okay, now um, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 says, You know, we are joined to the Lord in one spirit with Him. So when we are born again, you know, we become one spirit with God. Okay, so we are spiritually one with him and hence the holy spirit can communicate to our spirit man hence we can hear the holy spirit speak we can hear the holy we can feel the holy spirit we can uh, sense things in the holy spirit okay and um, one way he speaks is to the inner witness of the spirit in our in our with in our spirit man he bears inner witness okay but we need to be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Now, there are several different ways that the Holy Spirit bears witness to our spirit. There are eight things that are listed here. Now, this is not the, you know, the the only the eight. There are other ways. In the next chapter, we look at the voice of the Holy Spirit. The voice of the Holy Spirit is also uh, like the inner witness of the Holy Spirit that bears witness in our spirit. But there are eight here. These are, you know, common ways, but, you know, the Holy Spirit can speak to us in many different ways. He can reveal things to us in many different ways. But we will look at uh, these eight. The first one is the quickening of scripture. Second one is assurance within. Third is the desire. Fourth is the knowing. Fifth is the prompting. Sixth is the steering. Uh, uh, seven is the foreknowledge. And eight is the warning. And all this is happening within us in our spirit man okay so we need to make sure that our spirit man is aligned to the word of god it's submission to the uh, to the word of god it's obeying the word of god and that is when we can hear the holy spirit so sometimes you say you know i have people <coughs> sorry <coughs> Sometimes we say, no, uh, people are saying they can hear the Holy Spirit, they can sense, they can feel, they are seeing things in the Spirit, but I am not. You know, uh, it's not that the Holy Spirit is uh, partial. Uh, God is not partial. Okay, He wants to reveal things. His only thing is we are not training our spirit man. We're not communicating 
to God, to our spirit man. We are not, we are just reading our Bible and praying. It's becoming like a ritual. We're also not communicating with the Holy Spirit. We don't know him. We are not relating to him. So it's important for us to even fellowship with the Holy Spirit and relate to God in our spirit man. Okay. So the first thing we will look at is um, uh, to the quickening of scripture now before we look at all of these eight ways that the holy spirit uh, you know bears witness in our spirit we need to know accepting for the first one that is a quickening of scripture all the other seven assurance desire knowing prompting steering foreknowledge and warning within you know all of these others uh, you know must be validated because sometimes it can even be our emotions Excepting for the first one, which is scripture. Scripture speaks uh, for itself to, to, to us. But excepting for scripture, all the others have to be validated. That means you have to go back to scripture and find out, or you need to depend on the Holy Spirit to make sure whether it is the Holy Spirit that is leading you and guiding you. The first one is quickening to scripture. We've already looked at it in detail in uh, the previous chapter so we're not going to look at it um so you know how the quickening of scripture happens how does god holy you know he will just give us a word a reference word that will just come alive in our uh, situations we need to be sent to our spirit man that the second one is assurance within. Assurance within, within basically comes to the peace, experience an alarming peace of God. Okay, um, and this peace of God serves multiple uh, or in several different ways. Uh, look at Philippians chapter four, verses six and seven. It says, "Do not be anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer and petition, uh, you know, with thanksgiving, make known your request to God." And the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Okay. Um, so here we say, we see that, you know, what happens when we are not anxious and we submit everything to God in prayer? What happens? We experience the peace of God. And what does it say? The peace of God will surpass, surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds. So the peace of God actually guards, it becomes like a fortress, it becomes like a wall that will prevent everything else that is coming against you from disturbing and robbing you of that peace. Isn't that wonderful? You know, when we are anxious, when we are worried, we go to God in prayer, we submit everything, immediately the God, God's peace comes upon us. And not only that, God's peace is guarded. So that, you know, those things that are troubling us does not bother us, that does not uh, trouble us. And, you know, if it's troubling us and bothering us, that means we have totally not surrendered it to God. Sometimes we can say, you know, it's left it to God, but we can still be anxious and worried and we don't have that peace. Then you need to remember, well, this is not what God's word says. When I submit it to God, I have to experience his peace because he guards that peace from anything else that come against it okay the second thing we read is in colossians chapter 3 verse 15 it says let the peace of god rule in your hearts to which you also were called in one body and be thankful okay uh sean you can uh, share with him the textbook oh you have a textbook okay great okay okay so both of these scriptures are teaching us that believers should be walking in the peace of god uh, in their hearts and in their minds okay so you know we uh, one way the holy spirit bears witness is through the peace of god okay so colossians chapter 3 verse 5 says you know the word loses the word rule the peace of god will rule your hearts that means the peace of god will be like an empire you know not empire hotel where we go and have uh, good food but it's an um, empire for you know when you play some games football match football match so the, it it means that the, uh, rule means an empire or uh, to decide to determine to direct uh, to control to govern so the peace of god in your heart acts as an empire and the empire what does he do when he is uh, empiring a match what does he do he directs He's making sure that everything is going in the right way. You know, he's the desire, deciding factor, right? Whether the, the game is being played rightly or 
not. So the same way, the peace of God is like an umpire for us. Okay, so which means that if you're saying, God, is this the right thing for me to do? You can't hear an audible voice, you can't see an answer, you can't get a vision or dream, but you will experience this amazing peace. That peace is an inner witness in your Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is saying, go ahead with this. Okay, this is the right thing to do, or this is the right way to do it, or this is the right person for this. But if you don't experience the peace of God, then it's a red signal. Don't go. You know, if you're anxious, worried, there's a disturbance, there's doubt, that means the Holy Spirit is saying, don't go ahead with this. Okay, so that is how the Holy Spirit uh, is an empire, means the red signal and the green signal. When you have the peace of God, the empire is saying what? Green signal means what? Go, do it. Whatever you've decided, go ahead with it. Because that's a peace you're experiencing, the peace of God. But if you're not experiencing the peace of God, there's a lot of difficulty, turbulence, anxiety, then the Holy Spirit is actually revealing to you that, hey, don't go ahead with this. Don't meet that person. Don't include this person. Yes, Sean? Yes, Sean? Yeah, so when you're doing something wrong, Sean is saying, you know, when he's doing something wrong, there's a weird, pricking feeling. That's your conscience, Sean, that's telling you that, hey, what you you did is wrong, what you saw is wrong, what you said is wrong, what you thought is wrong. That's your conscience. Okay? Okay, so you're able to understand the assurance within. What do you see the assurance? Peace. Go ahead. It's the Holy Spirit giving the green signal. There's no peace. The red signal you don't go ahead with. It okay, so you know, uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, 18, and 25 says, If we live in the spirit, we will walk in the spirit and be led by the spirit. What does it mean to walk in the spirit? It basically means you're yielded, submitted under the influence, under the direction, under the leading of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so when we are led by the Holy Spirit, we will bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Um, the third one is desire within. Okay, now this desire is not an emotion, but is the Holy Spirit bearing witness in your inner being, in your in your spirit man. Okay, Psalm chapter thirty-seven was four. Can uh, Rin read that, please? Psalm thirty-seven was four. Yes, it says here, delight yourself also in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. It means, you know, what's the meaning of give? Give here means to put, uh, to make, uh, to cause, to bestow. So, you know, when we delight in our, ourselves in the Lord, then there are two things that happens. Okay, God puts his desires into our heart. And also what is our desire? If it's according to his will and plan, he will bring it out. But when will God put his desire in our heart? When will he cause our desires to come into being, to make it, to bestow it, to see it into fulfillment when? When we delight ourselves in the Lord. So remember I said every promise has a command. What is the meaning of delight yourself in the Lord? How can you, how will, when will God be delighted with you? When you obey God? When you walk in his ways, when you walk in righteousness and holiness, when you read his word, you delight in his word and his word becomes life, okay, and you abide in his word and abide in him. Okay, so when you delight in him, the two things happen. What is the first thing? All your plans and purposes, will he will bring it about. He will give it to you, means he will make it, he will cause it to happen. The second thing is he will also put his desires into your heart. And he will bring about those desires. He will cause it to happen. And he will be, uh, cause those desires to come into fulfillment. Okay? So when we desire ourselves in the Lord, that's when he also births things. He puts things in our spirit man. He births things means he can birth things that are having a greater impact for his kingdom, for the church, for the body of Christ, he will birth in you. You want to be an apostle, a prophet, a pastor, a teacher, whatever. He will birth it in you. But when will he birth it in you? When you are a one who is delighting yourself in the Lord. Okay. 
look at the Proverbs chapter 10, verse 24 in your uh, book. Okay. He says, and the desire of the righteous will be granted. Whose desires will be granted? Righteous. What's the meaning of righteous? Right with God. When you're doing the right things that are pleasing with God, you will right with God, right standing with uh, God. And look at John chapter 15, verse 7. What does it say? If you abide in me, Yeah, when will the desire will come about and when will it be done for you? When you abide in me and my words abide in you. So when we abide in God and, and his words abide in us, we follow it, we obey it, it becomes our light, our guide. You know, that's when the Holy Spirit will birth the plans and the purposes and the things of God. So you, sometimes when you're saying, hey, you know, here God has promised that he will birth things, he will tell us things, he will guide guide us, the Holy Spirit to his word, but I'm not getting any guidance, is because we are not delighting ourselves in the Lord, or we are not being righteous, or we are not abiding in him, and his word is not abiding in us. Okay, so what are the things that are qualify us for God's, our desires to be fulfilled, and God to birth his desires? is these three things which I just uh, said. So the Holy Spirit, through the inner witness in our spirit man, you know, fashions, puts, designs, brings about God's plans and purposes for our lives and also fulfills his desires and our desires that we have. But we must recognize that these godly desires are birthed in us by the, by whom? By the Holy Spirit. And then we follow God to see these things happening in our lives. Okay. Um, so, you know, I'll just give you an example. Uh, Pastor has given a couple of examples here on page number 51, 52, and top of page 53. Uh, you can read all of those examples, but I'll just give you my personal example, desire within. You know, um, I, as I told you, you know, uh, I felt sense that God was leading me towards children's ministry even though i wanted to do counseling with drug addicts and alcoholics it constantly you know kept putting me into children's ministry and ministering in schools so when i came back to bangalore you know i um, was again working in a organization that were administering to families and then i as i said that uh, you know the, the 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 director he looked at me one day and said hey you're so good with children why don't you start a project for children and so we started a project for children we started in schools we took it across to Kerala and Mumbai and Tumkur and other places and um, you know um, at the end of five years you know um, I had to leave that place okay and um, uh, I, I left that place and then you know it was in the month of April and in the month of May I just rested because I was very exhausted and tired and you know when in june schools begin here uh, in in bangalore city and you know june when school was the first of june i realized oh my gosh schools are going to be beginning and i'm not going to go back to schools and ministering in schools you know and then you know this god knows my desire okay and he's birthed this desire in my heart and i think god no i'm not going to go to be going back to schools i'm so sad i'm so disappointed what do i do and then immediately God is telling me, you know, go uh, put in your resume into all people's, send your resume to all people's church. And then I go to the, uh, you know, I get their uh, website and I go online and check. And, you know, in their employment, there was nothing that I fitted into. You know, some of them required to be married. I was unmarried. I'm still unmarried anyway. <laughs> unmarried. You know, and, um, and none of those things that I fitted, those criteria was not my area of expertise. I'm saying, God, I don't fit in anywhere here. And he's just saying, send in your resume. I say, God, if I go for the interview, they call me and I'll be the first fool going for an interview saying, I don't know which post I applied for. God just told me and I don't fit in any of those posts. They laugh at me, God. And God is saying, send your resume. And I just obey. I send in my resume. They call me for interview. That's the first interview they had with all the pastors. And I answered all the questions and I said, God, if they're going to ask me this question, which post you have applied for, I'll be the first fool. Don't make me a fool, please. And, you know, they never asked me that question. I was way too shocked. They never asked me that question. After the interview, they found me good and they said, Pastor, she said, you know, we have an opening in, in Ryan International School where you need to teach scripture. Are you willing? I just sat there shocked. 
you know, I just could not even even answer. And then just looking at him, he said, we have an opening in Ryan and, you know, would you be willing to take it? And I'm just looking at him because I was way too shocked. He said, will you be willing to take it? Yeah, 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 yes, yes. You know, and I came back with tears in my eyes. So you see, you know, when there's a desire within which the Holy Spirit births and you also have that desire, you know, he will bring you to pass. He will guide you. He will tell you what to do. And they're actually in that employment page in APC website. They had not put this this thing, you know, this employment open for a scripture teacher, somebody to start this whole project. So it's just amazing, you know, how God, the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us. So you can read pastors uh, life examples, page number 51, 52 and 53 later on. We'll move on. The next way the Holy Spirit bears inner witness in our spirit man is the knowing within. We just know. Okay. To the inner witness, the plans, purposes, uh, the direction, and the assignment of God is revealed to us through the knowing. Okay, for example, here is given uh, Acts chapter seven, verses twenty-three and twenty-four. You know, when um, when Moses was forty years old, before he was near the burning bush, when he was forty years old, it says it just came into his heart. Uh, you know, to visit the children of Israel. It came into his heart to know that, you know, uh, he, he was called by God to somehow deliver the Hebrews, okay, the, the Israelites. He did not understand how it's going to happen. He, does, he did not know how he's going to do. Um, you know, he's not, he did not know how it's going to take place. But he knew that this was his assignment from God. He just knew, okay, there's just this knowing inside just like i said you know uh when the holy spirit was guiding me into children's ministry i just knew this knowing this i just knew that but this is where the holy spirit is guiding me this is what god wants me to do you know i better not keep running away and ministering and counseling drug addicts and alcoholics he wants me to minister to children so there is a knowing uh within so this is the inner witness of the holy spirit you know he creates a knowing a rising up within just like for moses Okay, Moses just knew in his heart this is what God has called him to do. Even though he was the palace, even though he saw himself as a future pharaoh, you know, he was willing to identify himself with this slaves, the Israelites, and he knew that God is calling him to uh, deliver his people. Okay, so sometimes the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, we know for sure this is what the Holy Spirit wants us to do. Okay, again on page number 54 and top of half of page. Uh, 55 pastor he shared his experiences so you can read that you know um, the fifth one the holy spirit bears witness that our spirit is um through a prompting within he just prompts us yes there's a strong this is stronger than the knowing you know we know the knowing within okay the prompting is stronger okay why is it stronger as a strong urge it's a strong nudge in your spirit not just to know but to do something about it okay and only when we are sensitive in our spirit you know uh the, the, there's a holy spirit prom prompts us to do some things to take immediate action i'll just give you an example in 2017 i went to the us to visit my two sisters and i didn't plan anything what i'm going to do i just went there because i was totally exhausted i just wanted to rest and my my sisters just planned everything and my oldest me to Redding, California, where uh, Bethel Church is, and I love Bill Johnson. I was quite excited. She drove me all the way up from, uh, you know, Seattle, Washington, where she stays, to um, to Redding, California, and I was very excited because I'm going to Bethel, and I never imagined, I never thought it was just God's uh, orchestrating everything for me so beautifully. And we went on. We were not supposed to be there on sa Sunday, but they have a service on uh, Friday evening, and then we will going to attend the healing rooms that they have on Saturday with people from all over the world come for healing. And so Friday when I went, I was so much expecting to see Pastor Bill Johnson, but I was thoroughly uh, disappointed because there was another lady from the prophetic school that they have, Bethel Prophetic School, uh, who came up and she was speaking about uh, how to creative art. Okay, through music, to dance, to drama, to uh, skits, and, um, you know, just serving coffee, tea, or, you know, registration desk, how they can release the supernatural. And I was like, 
no way, God, you know, I wanted to hear Bill Johnson, Pastor Bill Johnson speak, and this is this lady, and I'm not this creative person, I have nothing to do with creativity. I was quite disappointed. And then she asked this first question when she came up, you know, uh, who's come from the furthest part of the world? So all my uh, people sitting around me, they, they you know, started speaking to us before service started. And uh, my sister said she's from India, she's visiting. So they all were shouting in by India. And then she said, who is the person who came from India? Said, Can you stand up? So I stood up and she said, Can you come up in front? So I went up in front and she gave me her book. And when I saw that book, that was all about creative, uh, how to release the supernatural to creative uh, ways, you know, to dance and to playing instruments. And I don't do any of those. OK, I'm not even good with uh, drawing and writing and all of that. And it's like, God, if you can give me one theological book of Pastor Bill Johnson, I would have been very, very happy. I just took that book and uh, she said, come back later, I'll sign on it. And I went back and sat in my place. And then when she started speaking, she was just talking about how to creative things, just to dance, how the supernatural is released, to a painting. You know, somebody was, uh, when they were having worship, you know, they paint. And, you know, God releases a supernatural. They release a word of prophecy or they release a word of knowledge. And uh, I, I just saw, you know, how people were healed. So, you know. One girl had just drawn during worship time. She had drawn this white head eagle, and she was releasing a prophetic word to somebody, and also to all of them who were suffering with their the stomachs, womb, and I still stood up because she suffers with acidity, and and you know they just prayed, and she said I felt to release something go out of my body, and she was instantaneously healed. So it's like wow, just through a painting, you know, there's an, a release. And then I'm sitting and listening to her, and then you know the Holy Spirit is just um, prompting me and saying, "Take this back and do it with the children. You know, start something called Kingdom Building Clubs, and you know, uh, do this with the children." And I went back and I, I I shared it with the children. I read this book. I was so excited, and you know, uh, the children caught it on, and they led service one Sunday, and it was just so powerful. You know, children painted, and to the painting, they released a supernatural. To the dance, to their, uh, uh, through uh, the worship, to their, they shared the word, and it was just such a powerful move of God. And I didn't have to do anything; it was just supernaturally led. It was just by the Spirit. And yeah, there was this prompting with. In the Holy Spirit is saying, take this back, do the same thing with the children in children's church. And we started, I started the kingdom building club, and it was so powerful, children just uh, thoroughly enjoyed. And how it all started was just a prompting. Holy Spirit said, take this and do it in, in, in the children's church. That's it. See, and it was just so powerful. Okay, so He can lead us through a prompting within, He can lead us with a stirring within. Okay, a uh, stirring is when you really feel led to do. Um, uh, uh, something okay so for example here uh, we look at some biblical examples in exodus chapter 35 verses 31 21 and 26 and in exodus chapter 36 verse 2 you know uh, god was telling moses to build a tabernacle and you know people just felt a stirring in their heart they just started coming and giving all their gold and silver and clothes and you know the women started using all these goats hair they started yarning stitching and making curtains and making all of those tents and also you know moses called uh, bezil and Alo uh, alotib and they were gifted artisans and god put the holy spirit put his wisdom into their hearts and the holy spirit stirred up their hearts and they came and they crafted every utensil every vessel everything that was there in the uh, in the tabernacle and how did it happen all through a stirring if you look at your uh, book page number 57 uh, exodus chapter 36 verse 2 it says you know uh, they were stirred in their heart you know Bezalel and aholib and also you know everyone who came uh, whose heart was stirred and everyone whose spirit was willing they brought to the lord offering for the work of the tabernacle okay another example we see here is in second chronicles chapter 36 verse 22 in ezra chapter 1 verse 1 you know, it's talking about these, uh, this, the Cyrus, uh, Cyrus, who is a Persian king, who is a heathen king. He's not a Jewish king. He doesn't know God. He does not have any relationship with the true and living God. But here we read in these two passages that his, the Lord stirred up his spirit. Whose spirit did he stir up? Cyrus, the king of Persia. Why did he stir up his heart? He stirred up his heart to send back the 
Jews back to Jerusalem to build back the city and to dwell in their own uh, in their own promised land because they were bring, brought as captives to Babylon. Babylon was taken over by the Persians. King Cyrus came and God stirred up his heart after the 70 year period. Now, this was a heathen king who did not even know God, but God can even work in the hearts of leaders, authorities to carry out his purposes. Okay, so he can stir up their hearts. Look at um, Nehemiah chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. What happened to Nehemiah? Who is Nehemiah? He's a cupbearer to the king. He also built the walls of Jerusalem. Okay, when he was a cupbearer to the king, you know, uh, some of his, um, you know, uh, friends came back from uh, from Judah, and Hanani, one of his brothers, told him the walls of Jerusalem is broken down. And what what did what happened to Nehemiah when he heard that? He was so broken in his spirit and his heart, he started weeping and mourning and fasting and in being in sackcloth and he mourned for so many days. And what did he do? Now God stirred up his heart. How do we know God stirred up his heart? Because it says in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 12, it says, I told no one what God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. So the stirring in his heart to do something about rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, who put it in his heart? It's God. It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit put the plans of God in his heart. And it stirred him up to an extent that, you know, he could not stay still till he did it. Okay, so sometimes we can experience a stirring in our hearts and uh, we don't stop till we uh, do what the Holy Spirit wants us to do. Okay, so we'll just stop here. We'll pause here. Uh, time is up. Okay. Um, we will continue with this chapter, but you can read uh, the examples, uh, real life examples of uh, Pastor Ashish. Anyone has any questions? Uh, anyone on our own students have any questions? Sorry for the inconvenience and happening after the break. Apologies for that. Any questions? Okay, no questions, then we will end class. Thank you for joining us. And I'll see you next week.